everyone. I was going over um, last the show that I just uh, previously posted on YouTube, and um, I noticed at the very end, the last 20 minutes or so, we were basically discussing debt cancellation. And as landlords, um, you know, people owe us money, you know, constantly. They um, they have to pay, to pay rent every month, so on and so forth. And the conversation of um, property management evolved into um, on whether or not debt should be canceled, whether or not, you know, if someone gets behind on their rent, whether we should just basically start over. Um, the three of us have rather strong uh, viewpoints on that. One of our members uh, mentioned the Islam faith um, actually encourages um, those who lend money to wait for the money that they owe to be repaid with no penalties or interest. Um, again, like I said, each one of us has varying uh, views on that, and that's what I wanted to pull out um, of the podcast last week, pull out that last 20 minutes, because um, it's basically a discussion about debt cancellation and whether as landlords um, we should, um, if someone gets two or three months behind, um, whether we should just forgive the previous debt and start over. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it. There are some members in the group that think that's a good idea. Um, I'm not necessarily on board with that. Um, I'd like for everyone to, I'd like to discuss it in the forums and maybe we could pick up on this topic um, at some point in the future, but you know when is when is enough enough basically? And so anyway, the la I'm pulling out the last 20 minutes of this show, and it is of the show from last week or from la from last year. Um, as you know, I'm putting everything on YouTube, but um, it is the last 20 minutes of our show on property management, and it is debt cancellation. Um, so this is the last 20 minutes of that show. So. Enjoy. We don't. We don't have to hold it for a year. You can ask right. them all. You're online right now. If you're looking at our uh, live stream, the current advertisement that Ustream is putting on there was asking about ask a lawyer live. That's funny. Mm. Yeah, we should. We should have. That would be an interesting one to have some attorneys on and have our. Um. Anyway, of our attorneys, yeah. <laughs> I I had a I had an isolated experience with with a rental. I, I rented I rented a house to a relative. I a few years back I rented a house. I had a house and I rented it to a relative and I did I had a lease and everything and I knew from the beginning that the uh, I knew that who I was renting to got a check regularly from the government and that it was direct deposited and I set up um, electronic an electronic transfer from his checking account to my checking account on the same day that his check was deposited each month and um, so I got I did I, I did get my money every month um, the um, it's interesting, he, he, after it was going on for a while, he didn't like that because he, he had cash flow problems and he would, he, he, he thought he probably could prioritize what he needed to pay, um, and, and put me down lower on the priority list <laughs> if he could get that money. But the interesting thing was, he was a college graduate, he could have just as easily figured out how to stop that electronic <laughs> payment from happening, but he didn't. He never, he, he didn't call the bank and put a stop on that or, or this or that. Um, actually, I, we had it in the lease that I was going to set it up that way, that it was going to be by electronic <coughs> withdrawal on the day that, of his monthly um, deposit. It was, I had that language in the lease, and uh, that worked pretty well, but that was an isolated uh, special case. I don't know if that's something that's, uh, that's, that's my only experience with, uh, with being a landlord um, before now. Um, 
Man, it seems like that would create a lot of hassle if you can get somebody to do that. You don't have to go to the bank all the time. And it's oh, it'd be, it'd be, yeah. In the account. Yeah. I mean, I know it's not for everybody. Like if I could sit at home and scan man, checks, scan, set that up with somebody. Scan, or we set, set, like what Donnie was saying. Mm -hmm. With yeah. as many tenants as possible. Right. It's just a lot easier. I, I, you don't hear a lot about that. You don't hear a lot about people doing that. Doing, like, setting up direct deposit for rental payments, do you? I mean, I know. I don't either, but it seems like it would be very, like, some little older people or handicapped people, maybe that can't get out and do stuff, you know, because we talked about maybe doing some handicap accessible eventually, you know, it seems like it of course might you be. Can, you can put a check in the mail. I mean, they have to put other things in the mail. I don't think no, that's. Well, but, yeah, but. I don't think handicap makes it. I don't. I mean, if if somebody's got the money to to pay the rent, I don't think I don't think that's it. I think it's I'm of the opinion that the people that can afford to do it generally do it pretty. We do, generally don't have those kinds of issues, and the people that can't afford it, that have money issues, they they they're not going to be able to maintain it. And it's going to end up being more of a hassle to you than I I, I think it depends on you. Depends on the location and and how how careful you are with with to whom you rent. Mm -hmm. I think that if you if you get the right tenant in there, you don't need to do that, but you certainly could because they would have the ability to do it. And in other situations, you, you wouldn't. I guess it comes back around to screening the tenants. You know, I got I got my money every month. Um, predictably, but the relationship only lasted for six months because it, w it it got to a point where it was just unacceptable to him to have that done that way because he was getting behind on his other bills and he uh, he, he wasn't able so and we had he had to move out for for those reasons it wasn't he didn't move out owing me money but. Um, but um, it's probably a... I tell you, it's bothersome for for people that are on borderline as well. It's bothersome on that not seeing the money. Mm -hmm. That's bothersome. We have we have one similar where the um, where the check was basically that part of their income didn't go didn't go to they never saw it it went to us <coughs> it was a special circumstance for a short period of time and it was very bothersome for that person very very bothersome that they didn't see that money even though they were going to turn around and write a check for it or give cash for it people like to see it exactly it. they like to have it in their hand and it makes them feel good to dispense it when it happens automatically some people lose that Use that control. Yeah, they don't. Whatever. They don't like that. Not everybody's going to be like that. I, I can't make any generalities based on that, but I do know that that happened in that one particular instance. Yeah, people like to have some level of control of their their lives. I remember my grandparents when they were doing the when they got their social security or whatever. This has been several years ago. Um, they were concerned about they wanted to see the check. They didn't want the direct deposit. I think they gave them the option to have direct deposit back then. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's mandatory. I, mean, I, think it's I have mandatory. an aunt that gets hers still by check because she just refuses to. Yeah. I don't understand. They the, wanted to see the check and hold, you know, they wanted to have, they didn't want it directly deposited into her account. She's from the wanted, 30s, banks fail. Yeah. Yeah. My grandparents were too. And they, they wanted she, gets her, she gets her check stolen out of her box. <laughs> she, she, gets still out. she gets her she'd stolen rather, out of She'd rather risk that. It, that's a possibility. But Than a bank. Yeah. Failure. It's, 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 it's there's happened. not there's not been an uninsured it's bank failure more anymore. than once, and she still. So how do people still? I don't understand this. I don't have a criminal mind, so maybe that's what it is. But how do people steal your check out of your? Well, more importantly, box? how do they get away they with it? How do they steal it? How do they get away? I know they steal it. I mean, that's that's not the problem. That's not where I have the problem. I don't know if they. But yeah, how do they, they cash do. it? I don't. I don't know if they get it cashed. You know, they they steal it, and that's 
then she's got to call Social Security. And wait on a reissue. Yeah, but I don't know if the check ever actually gets cashed. Because that's an excuse that I get for people not paying their rent a lot of times. Oh, my checks were stolen. Somebody stole Or somebody stole my check. Yeah. You know? That, that is, that so that is, I couldn't deposit it. That's the A number one, that's an A number one excuse that I've ever heard is that... Maybe that the check a, my check didn't come in. They're doing a trace on it. Yeah, that's very common. That's well, maybe that's that a be number a good, one. There's not one excuse that's more common. It than might that. be a good question to ask up front, um, which you might get a, you might get a truthful answer because they don't know they don't know. Well, you're you're a, that. Yeah, the reason is is your check direct deposited. That's very good. I like yeah. that. That's very good. Now, do you have direct deposit on your check? Can you sign an affidavit saying that you do that you do have? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Because when they come to you, you have and any say, problems getting your check? Because you <laughs> right. when yeah. they come to you and say, "Oh, my check was stolen out of my mailbox," or they, they I never got my money. check," or mm -hmm. that's you know, so it's I, either they never got their check, yeah. it didn't People come in the mail, or it was stolen. Well, that's gonna be. It didn't show up in my account this month. I just don't know why. Yeah, I mean, I uh, call them. They didn't. Well, that's, exactly. that's happened because we we had yeah, other people I, I that were that were tenants that didn't receive a physical check. These and. It could happen. Yeah. And we're all, and you, you can never get any verification. There's never any verification. Nobody can ever get verification. There, there has been an exception where someone was able to get verification. They actually got me a letter from Social Security saying that there was a mix up. And mm. So I was very surprised. But I, you do every once. There are honest people, but the dishonest people make it hard for the people that are honest because, right. you know, you're constantly suspicious of, you know, because people are always trying to play tricks. Insurance and health care. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. The bad screw it up for the good. Exactly. I mean, so you do Fire have insurance, I mean, you do have people insurance. that are telling the truth and do have problems. They, did, they didn't They did get their check or they didn't have, but nine times out of ten, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, they're feeding you like a bull. And that's why I, I don't, some people, that's why typically I don't even have them mail it in, like the ones that we manage ourselves. Because they just, that's just a reason for them to have an experience. Well, we've had such bad experience, we have. especially from one particular tenant that's been there for a very long time. Yeah. And is it is I I really honestly think a good person, and she just can't. She just has issues. She has she has family things, and you know. Different things come up. But the number two, the number two reason. By the way, you know what the number two reason? Well, there's three main reasons. One, my check didn't come in. Mm -hmm. The other one is the bank screwed up my account and I'm overdrawn. The bank did it. Yeah. Okay. And number three is my car broke down. And this is this is so this is a topic. No, I have to I have to pay for a car for to be car repair. Repair. Oh, This is a topic. To this is okay. probably another topic I want to talk yeah, about we're way sometime, off topic. sometime in the future. Not really. We're not. Too yeah, far, we are. Not too far off. <laughs> topic. This has nothing to do. Yeah, well, um, it's it's a multi. It's still in a multi-unit building. It's still but, valuable. But this is still valuable. But I like to talk to, about this at one How point. You when do you when do you call it? When do you just erase the debt and start over? I mean, I was watching Susie Orman last night. And she was saying the banks are being stupid. They should just erase <laughs> part of it and start over. Absolutely. Okay? They, they, they should just erase part of it, start over. People are getting on their feet, and then just start from a clean slate. You know. So when do you get to the point where you say to a tenant, "Okay, we have this tenant. You know, they paid a little bit at, at the at a time. You know, what Susie Orman was saying: the banks, when you're in foreclosure, won't even accept unless you pay the full payment. They won't accept it." They won't accept partial payment or whatever, and they won't they won't uh, renegotiate the loan to just forget all that and start over. So when do you when do you say and we've been in this predicament before? When do you say and we've actually done this? When do you say when do you start a clean slate? You know this person has income. When do you just forgive the past debt and start anew and just move forward, knowing that they'll never be able to catch up? It sounds crazy. Well, that's what you have to do. You Maybe, stop them before they can get to the point. Where it's easier or cheaper for them to move on and hold out for as long as they can hold out for eviction, because that's what you, it's it's a it's a it, they are calculating opportunity cost. They do it. They don't call it that in their minds, but there gets to be a point when they there's no way possible they can ever catch up. Mm -hmm. We've had that. Now the, the key to that is 
don't let them get there. Yeah. But if you have gotten to that point, sometimes it's better to to work on getting collecting the next month's rent. And forgetting about the previous month. And I, I think there's some value to that. to that. I know it's somebody that's got a business where somebody wrote a bad check, wrote them a bad check, and then they refuse to do business with them anymore because they had that outstanding bad check. Good client. Paying and paying, and then it got behind, got behind. Then they wrote a big bad check, mm -hmm. and then they 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 refused to do business with them. Well, what they did was they stopped business. They stopped the possibility of making money on that person for a whole year, mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. instead of realizing that that, that it is they an paid interesting. It is an interesting argument, and mm -hmm. and this are are this this strategy um, is. It has has been applied. It, it's being applied in the world. Um, I think this is the, the the. I don't know if it's the the Muslim. Um, what what if? I think it's in the Muslim tradition that periodically debt is erased, and that financially, I mean, their banks work. You know, their yeah. banks have to follow the, and these traditional clerics in these countries where. You know, maybe like Iraq or or um, um, uh, Iran or somewhere that this is in the Muslim law that at, at a certain periodically everybody's debt is erased and you start over again. And what it it doesn't mean that their financial and they they practice this and 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 that it doesn't mean that their financial. Um, their financial system, you know, it, it comes to a, a, you know, falls apart. But what it is is they practice. Very, they are very, very um, careful about extending debt, and they're very, they're very, um, they, they they are very uh, careful about, yeah, uh, you know, keeping their financial house in order so they don't accrue because they they they. People don't let them accrue debt because at some point that debt, if that debt is going to go to zero, so I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that debt That's goes so to you know, and and it is, they they it is it is a lot. I think it's a lot harder to get a mortgage there mm -hmm. because they are very very stickler about making sure they get somebody that can pay that because because periodically back debt will be. Back to I have heard, in a related sense, and I don't know if this is true, but I, I've heard this. This is, this is a really old old wives' tale. Um, that many times when people have are having problems, once they once they declare bankruptcy, they are able to get more credit than if they before they declare bankruptcy. If they had, you know, just bad credit, bad credit, bad credit, bad credit. You can only file every so often, mm -hmm. so once you've cleared that slate, uh, it's my understanding that that sometimes it's easier to get certain amounts of credit than if than before you declare bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. I'm not comparing a a bank a person that's declared bankruptcy someone has good credit, but I'm talking about before they if they've gone a year of lousy payment histories. Um, then I've heard that. I don't know if that's true or not. And a problem I have with this, especially in multi, we're talking about multi-unit buildings versus single-family homes, yeah. as far as investments goes. If we erase the debt, and in in like if we say, okay, you can start it, like in a, a a tenant in one of our multi-unit buildings says, okay, we'll erase it. We'll start over. We know you have a guaranteed check coming in. Forget about that. Out. We just start over. So now. You're, you're getting the reputation of, you just erased debt. Right. You just erased debt. You just let her get by with mm -hmm. $2,000 worth of debt. So what's that keep someone else from coming in there and saying, right. okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create some kind of problem or some kind of event in my life where I can't pay. I'm going to go, 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 go. And then I'm going to say, hey, you erased hers. And usually they don't say that. Usually they don't say, oh, you did that for her, why can't you do it for me? I didn't get that a whole lot. But you know that they know, and you know, you're, you, know you have a reputation. You know that when a building gets a reputation or whatever, 
It's about reputation, and that's where I kind of deviate from Susie Orman's school of thought. You know, these banks have these they have thousands and thousands of customers. They, they, they want the reputation of saying, okay, we're just going to forgive that debt, and then, you know, someone else does it, someone else does it, you know, and then five years from now, they expect, I mean, where do you draw the line? You well, want to get I think the reputation. it must be hard to well, get forgiveness, too. I don't think they just arbitrary. Yeah, how do you do I mean, that? How do you, oh, yeah. yeah. Of course it's not arbitrary, but how do you, how do you get the, how do you get that? How do you get that? There's also the situation, there's also the situation that we've, uh, that we've talked about before is when a person gets to a certain level, it's cheaper just to pay them to get out. It right? is. So that's another thing that you would have to, yes. that we get a reputation for. So I think you've got to be careful on all these things, and I'm not proposing that. The real way to stop this is to enforce your late payment policy right. extremely strictly. That's the, that's the way to avoid all these what if this happens, what if this happens, what if this happens. Right. And you know what? What you're going to end up doing is evicting some good people that had the possibility of redemption. But I think in the long run, unfortunately, I, I'm jaded. So, but I think eventually in the long run, if you have the, if you have the cojones and the, the hard heart to do this, you're going to have way fewer problems if you stick to and enforce that and don't make any exceptions. I think in the long run, you'll be more successful financially and also um, with less, less heartburn. Mm -hmm. Less heartburn if you do that. I don't, it's a hard thing to do because I'm telling you, um, I can sit here and preach and uh, that's what we're going to do. And as soon as I get in front of the person, that's why that separation is so good. As soon as you get in the front of the person, you say, hey, and it's, you know, and it sounds legitimate, and you think, well, what if I was in that situation? Um, but That's why it's easy. That's why Walmart has, you know, that's why businesses have a hierarchy of people. That way, that they, you know, the person that's talking to the tenant says, hey, the top won't let me do it. They says, well, you got, you have to pay that late fee. I'm sorry. you got to pay it. You know, that way you, you pass the buck on someone else. Yeah. If they think you have any flexibility, then they're going to say it, unless you're just uh, hardcore and say, I'm sorry, no. But if you pass the buck, and, you know, maybe it's easier for you mentally. But yeah. you know, you, like you said, you have to, you have to, you need to enforce that. That's what we talked My about last week. My hands are tied. Yeah, like the inspectors, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, that's what we we talked about that a little last week. Enforcing the late fees, or was the week before, enforcing the late fees and, and knowing that because a lot of our units are close together, even. Like how most of the units we have are like close together. Or, they're adjacent. And, and they're adjacent to each other, and you know that those people talk. Mm -hmm. You know that oh, they Sometimes. let me get by with. Well, we haven't years. had a problem with that with that too much, but in the multi units, yeah, it's it, it's a big problem. You have to be, you have to be, um, you have to be consistent with everyone, and we and we have to enforce the late fees, enforce the deposits, and right now. I'm like, don't even bother filling out, filling out an application if you don't have the first month's written deposit. Don't even bother. Because it's it's a it, right. it is a it's a bad omen. It is. It is a it. There's no we, bigger predictor. You know, so we said this a failure weeks ago. Right. To me, there is no bigger predictor whether or not you're going to be able to to maintain this than that. If you start out with a with any kind of a reason you can't do something, right? You're doomed for failure. Yeah, we've had people come up and say, you know, will you make payment arrangements on the deposit? I'm like, no, I don't do that. It's very clear on the website that we don't do that. I, we don't. We make no exceptions. We do not make payment arrangements for the deposit. And so don't even, don't even fill an application because when they say what well, about the application, they ask that you don't hear from them. That's it. And so there's very few, very few that actually get to the level where they fill out the application, submit me, submit to me all the information that they, you know, the proof of income, the um, all the requirements that, that we need. Very few of them even get to that. Get By the way, if you mm -hmm. purchase a higher end unit, then you've got the money to float it. I think you can eliminate most of what we're going. We're talking about entry level. That, that's my Bread and butter houses. Yeah. yeah, we're talking about entry level. 
And I think I'm of the opinion that if you go higher than that, uh, you eliminate many of these problems. And we, this is a recurring theme. We talked about that last week. Uh, it's on our own personal rental experiences. And, yeah. and I think that that's... So don't, don't listen to this and think that the whole world is like that. Right. It's, about, it's about a certain level, which I think most of the people that are, that are interested in learning about this, that's, that's who's listening. I think, it's, I think it's appropriate for the audience. But there could be people that are listening that might have the money to do higher end places, and I think you've got room. You've got room to. Um, you got room to be more more finicky, more picky. So you don't have to worry about giving debt in those types of environments either. Like at my apartment, which was a higher end one that I moved out of several years ago, my uh, landlady would say. Hit the road, Jack. I got two people that want your exactly. apartment behind you. Exactly. So, bye. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> so I'm not going to forgive your late rent. Right. I'm going to evict your we'll, we'll go and sue you. Well, if I have a job. You know, and that's We're a higher place. She can afford that. Like We're going to sue you. <laughs> We're going to sue you. Garnish, yeah. sure. Garnish your know. wages. Yeah. So they have that, more recourse. They have more recourse, and that's a big thing. That's I'm another telling. topic. That's another topic. <laughs> but having recourse from someone, these people that go from job to job, you know, they have no, uh, you have no recourse on them. So you have to put up with more, you know. So that forgiving debt thing, um, kind of on that. I'm iffy on that. I don't know. So a good, so a good, um, uh, a good take-home message from all of this that I'm getting um, is that um, as far as being a being a landlord, um, being a manager of uh, of, of properties, of your um, own properties, is that. You need to be um, consistent in your policies. You have to communicate specific details um, from the get-go with your with your tenants, um, what your policies are, um, and you have to have appropriate boundaries um, with your tenants. Um, what kind of um, um, what kind of uh, problems that you do want to hear uh, have a call about and. And if you get a call that's not appropriate, if you get a call about uh, uh, noise or um, uh, um, uh, somebody's um, uh, they're fighting or something like that, then then you say uh, those calls need to go to the uh, those calls need to go to the uh, police department. Um, I'm, I'm going to go. I, I got to get off here. Uh, um, that kind of call. I think if I were you, I'd call the police department. I don't know what to do about that for you. Bye bye. I'll see you on rent day. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, man, my manager will see you on rent day. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. How, how did you get this number? <laughs> yeah, if you are being robbed or, some, or someone sneaking around your house, do not call your landlord. Call the police. Especially one that lives 20 minutes away. Right. Especially when the police station's across the street. <laughs> in the case of one of our apartment that buildings. Familiar. Yeah. Across your apartment the street. Across the street. One of your apartment don't call well, I don't, know. <laughs> don't call don't call our don't call the landlord. Call the police. Right. Okay. So well, thank it's, you, America. It's about an hour. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I don't think we're meeting next week. Um, but we will have more interesting topics um, coming up for you in the next few weeks and into next year, of course. So please visit us on landlordsjournal.com. We always like to have people visit us. Um, and we continue posting our journal entries posting on there. Posting entries of our exciting landlord life that we lead. So I guess we'll sign off here. Um, have a good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. See you in two weeks. Thank you.